Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad again. This is our Artemis uh, 4M3, and it is going to Mars. This is our uh, first crewed launch back to the uh, Red Planet in uh, quite a few years, actually. It's like, what, 1983? 1984. Oops. Well, it's uh, very early 1984, or very late, 12, almost 1985. So, uh, we have... In the pilot seat, Lee Bowman. Uh, we have mission scientist Catherine Richards and systems engineer Nina Testarina. Or something. Anyway, uh, our inclination with the moon is at an appropriate level, so we will set our throttle to full. This is our final version, DN6BX. As you can see, the changes to the uh, upper stage, including better thrusters and uh, just a, a better layout for a more appealing design in general. So anyway, let's uh, let's get the show on the road. Mission sequence start. And we are all engines running. Let's get these launch clamps off. A bit of a slow crawl off the pad, 1.14 liftoff thrust to weight ratio. But uh, we've run this test before. We've run a vehicle that actually had a little bit more mass to it. That would be the uh, lunar mission that we used to kind of test out the four, uh, the Artemis 4 system. It wasn't a 4M because it didn't have the Mars HAB stuff in here, which uh, I'm kind of excited to, to show to you because it's it's awesome. So it looks like we have a good light. All six uh, RS-25s, all eight RD-171Ms, and uh, we're just going to keep them crawling to orbit. I'm sure they're excited. They're not going to be back for a couple of years. At the very least, they are going to be our next batch of crew to go gather that all-important science-y stuff from Mars. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get this uh, big thing to orbit, and I will pick all of you up there. And while a little slow off the pad, this uh, DN6 does eventually uh, get going uh, relatively well. I don't know. It's a proven launch vehicle at this point. We've uh, flown a couple of different variations, and we've run the simulation uh, a couple of times now. Now, uh, I should point out that this is the uh, initial variant of the Artemis 4M. It is not the uh, expanded crew carrier variant um, that we did in the uh, live stream episode, just for the simple reason that getting it into production and getting it ready for this window was untenable. So uh, this round, we are only taking three crew out to uh, Harmonia Station. We might follow up with an additional three crew next window, uh, but these three might be on their way home by then, depending on uh, how well all the researching of things goes. But uh, we'll. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it, future missions uh, out to Mars, providing, of course, that our uh, new crew capsule system the uh, with the expanded crew capacity can prove itself uh, returning from the moon would be the first step, and then we'll worry about trying to return one to Mars. But we certainly have the lift capacity uh, on this DN6 to get something of that kind of tonnage out to Mars. We're actually a little uh, underweight uh, this mission, as uh, we will come to see uh, a little later. But the, uh, the new habitat module does not weigh uh, a whole lot, but we'll get to that later. There's booster set. They are off and cleanly away, and now we are running solely on our six uh, RS-25 DEs. We're just going to wait to get a little further on our ascent path before we jettison the launch escape system. And of course, as I'm talking about not jettisoning it, we jettisoned it. So uh, we are now in uh, abort-to-orbit mode, should we have a failure with uh, more than two of our uh, RS-25s. We can utilize the HG-3 to uh, abort the crew safely to orbit, and then return them home. Where actually, we could uh, abort to orbit on our service propulsion system, uh, should we need to, although our time to Apogee is uh, a little wany, but uh, if we burn some fuel off of that thing anyway. Uh, uh, more than two of those RS-25s failing and the HG-3 failing would be very, very unlikely at this juncture. But just so you know, I have thought about it. Just a quick check to uh, lock some of our fuels, uh, make sure that we're not burning excessive thruster propellants. Now, we've got uh, plenty of thrust to weight ratio, so we'll actually be doing a, a little bit of a throttle back uh, here in a little bit just to keep the crew comfortable. Or maybe that throttle back was uh, before booster set. I know we did do a throttle back. They've had a very nice, 
comfortable ride so far without uh, being smushed to their seat backs. There's the throttle back. I thought there was one. Anyway, uh, back to old me for live coverage. All right, uh, 293 by 197. Man, we still had more than a kilometer per second left in our core stage. Uh, I think we're uh, a tad bit underweight. Anyway, we'll uh, just go ahead and stage that off here. Goodbye, old friend. Thank you for the lift. And uh, activate our HG3 engine. Make sure our throttle is set to nothing. Yes, fantastic. Engine is activated. 4,083 meters per second available there. We can get rid of Rendezvous Planner. We need to select Mars. There it is, Mars, not Venus. Set this target, and we will just uh, bring up Maneuver Planner. Let it do its calculating thing. Go. How about as soon as possible? Anytime now. Rains at time 151 days. That's well within threshold for 3.922 kilometer, or 3.922 kilometers per second. Yeah, I had that right. Good for me. All right, and uh, that node does in fact give us an encounter. So we're uh, how long do we have before that? One hour and some coin. So good news. Uh, RCS to arm, and let's get ourselves facing into it. That'll only take a couple of minutes, I promise. Uh, you can go away now, Maneuver Planner. I will definitely be taking a look at that node beforehand, just to make sure that uh, it is going where we want it, coming in on the correct side of the planet and whatnot. We'll just time warp to kill it with rotation, because I'm a cheater. All right. And Mars. Focus view. Uh, yeah, not quite. That's okay couple of small little adjustments actually let's uh let's practice using maneuver node editor hey look at that a couple little bumps of radial there bingo yeah 75 kilometers that's fine for this target um yeah we should probably adjust for this 5.53 degree is uh, not exactly ideal. Nope, wrong way. Come on. Let's have some anti normal. That's what I like to see. Ascending node at 1.6 degrees. That is awesome. And we will, of course, bring that down uh, a little bit later. But one hour, 18 minutes until our burn. Uh, I think we've got enough electric charge to stave that off. We should, anyway. So we'll just uh, take our quick lap here. All right, five minutes 20 from node. Uh, it says we got about a 10 minute runtime on this and we're only over by a couple hundred meters per second on margin. So we're just gonna go ahead and go for it. We're right at the five minute mark. This of course is our estimated burn time is one minute. That's not a thing. All right, very stable. Three, two, one, ignition. That's a good light on the HG3. Fantastic, we'll just uh, try to dial this in a little bit. It is an off-plane transfer, as you can tell by our uh, angle to our prograde vector versus our node. Uh, shouldn't be a huge deal. We've got uh, quite a bit of overhead this mission, thankfully. Oh, that's... that's kind of pretty. Alright, well, we'll just uh, let this HG3 run its business while we are getting things uh, set up and stuff. Oh, and you know what we should be doing is rolling our next flight out to the launch pad, which uh, I guess the more important thing, yeah, let's get our uh, our lander rolling out. That'll take 11 days. We're going to be a little bit past uh, node on all of these things, but, you know, it happens. That's why we've got a, a lot of overhead on these flights. Anyway, 
Yeah. As I mentioned before, we are uh, a bit underweight as far as this mission and the capacities of the uh, DN6 platform and this fantastic uh, expanded B or optimized B upper stage is concerned. But uh, don't you worry one little bit. I will uh, absorb every little bit of those margins with terrible piloting. So uh, this is an extraordinarily long burn, and I really wanted to just nail it right off the bat because that just would have been neat if we could uh, arrive with uh, some overhead involved, but uh, it, w it was not to be, not in, not in any sense of the word. Um, now, the intention on our original flight out to Mars was to keep the uh, B upper stage uh, attached and use it either as a wet lab or as like an anchor so that we could, I don't know, at least claim to use some of the uh, Kerbal attachment system stuffs to make a tether and uh, use it as a counterweight to rotate to create some kind of artificial gravity. We were not able to do that uh, initially on our first leg out because, uh, well, we were way off node and way off plane. We actually had to burn the service propulsion system engine to keep things running smoothly or to get to Mars in general. It was, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it was not the way I planned it to be, but it, it worked. We put uh, some boot prints on Mars, and hopefully we're going to be able to do that again. Now we've got a, a couple more launches to get to to uh, make that a thing. Uh, we've already got the uh, food, water, oxygen supply tank on its way. We've got to send a fuel tank, and of course a lander, because uh, they have no method of landing on Mars uh, as this is. This is just basically the transit pod. We've got... The, the Artemis IV itself and a HAB module, which we'll, uh, we'll get to take a look at here in just a little bit. This is an extraordinarily long burn for this HG-3. We're really kind of pushing it to the very edge of its rated burn time, uh, which is, it is rated for 10 minutes. I think we've got total fuel allotment of like 9 minutes, 50 seconds. Uh, maybe it was a little longer. I probably should have taken a closer look at that before I start to record this. But um, yeah, there's a whole lot of me trying very, very hard to keep it right on the node just as much as I can to avoid the need for a correction burn. And as we come up on the end here, I will throttle back, zoom out from our view at Mars, and realize we don't even have... Yeah, we're, we're not even getting an encounter. So we're going to uh, zoom in just a little bit on to uh, Earth and uh, try to play with this node just a little bit and see what kind of uh, correction we need to make. Yeah, we're, we're coming in way under Mars. So we'll... Uh, tug at our nodes here and try to get this re-lined up uh, at least as well as we had it uh, the first time, which I've never been able to hit those nodes very well. But uh, a lot of just wiggling it around, trying to get our periapsis and that descending node to be somewhat aligned. And uh, looks like we'll have just enough in the tank to clear this. I'm really hoping because we're we're almost entirely out of fuel, but uh, in the interests of accuracy, I'm going to go ahead and time warp on out to the node before uh, making the burn. We have one ignition left in this HG3, so we, we do kind of have to get it just right. There's the light, and there's flame out. That is every last little bit of fuel that we brought with us. We're going to try to just go ahead and clean up the rest on thruster power which will take an obscenely long time, considering how much tonnage we're hauling around now. I think uh, with the completely empty HG3 stage, considering we're a little underweight, I'd say it's right around 100 tons, maybe 115, 120, somewhere in that general range. But uh, lucky for you, I've sped this all up. And... So you don't have to watch the 20 minutes that I spent holding down the H key, trying to just dial this in a little bit just to get it on the correct side of the planet and uh, hopefully a little closer. Anyway, here's uh, old me for live stuff. All right. And I don't know why it's still moving. I came off the controls. Of course, it's doing whatever the hell it wants to do. Yeah, and those are empty. I'm going to drop a little fuel in there just uh, to aid docking. This will only take about 25 minutes. That should be well more than enough. 
All right, and it's time for the show. Jettison. 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 All right, and there's our new have module we'll set as target and control from here. We need to spin around and dock with that sun. And hopefully without wandering too far off course like this. Wow. And we're closing pretty fast. We should probably uh, hit some brakes. 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 Dunk. Oops. <laughs> Found it. Just nuzzle our nose right in there. Very gently. Docked. Excellent. And start to deploy stuff. Cannot deploy while stowed. Seriously. Switch, switch back. No, I do not want to disable the RCS port. I would like to deploy my... Cannot deploy while stowed. Seriously. All right. Well, we'll extend the panels on the HAB. Quick save. And go ahead and inflate these while we're here. There we go. These uh, extra life support uh, things, and we've got a fuel reserve up top. And more life support down there. Of course, another docking port to bring us into the Harmonia. We can. Uh, we will leave those fuels unlocked for now. Because why not? Alright, are any of you going to deploy? Obviously not. Alright, well, we are going to leave our HG3 stage attached. Um, we're going to imagine that we have a uh, tether here so that we can spin and create artificial gravity on our way to Mars. Uh, infernal robotics is uh, fickle and doesn't really want to let me do stuff like that. Stand. Oh, come on. Fine. But we're just going to angle these two functional panels into the sun and see what kind of uh, electric charge we are going to get. Oh, yes, we are charging our batteries. Fantastic. That's That's good news. That is very, very, very good news. All right. That's awesome. We're on our way back. So we've just got like uh, four more launches to take care of. Um, I'm, I might just compile those all into one great big episode to uh, share you, the, save you the tedium of uh, basically watching the same episode six times in a row. No one wants to do that. But uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later. <laughs>